Hello calculus folks. Um, you must have chose this problem. It's one of our first problems and it's called the best fencing plan. So what I want you to do is I want you to read the question and we're going to go through these five steps. And the first step, what I want you to do as a group or by yourself is to think about what they are asking for in order to understand the problem. I'm going to pause the video and when you come back or when you unpause it, I'm going to have the answer to what my understanding of the problem is. And then I want you to compare that with your group. Well, F Farmer Phil has a rectangular plot of land, so I drew a rectangle and is bounded on one side by a river of lava. Um, the lava is very hot, by the way. So um, the remaining three sides of the fence are going to be constructed from electrical fencing, and Phil only has enough money to buy 800 meters of fencing. So they want us to figure out what configuration of the three sides will yield the largest area. In the next part of the problem, I need you to develop a mathematical model. Every problem we do with optimization requires um, developing some sort of mathematical model, either drawing a picture, labeling a diagram, introducing variables, even coming up with a function. So what I want you to try to do as a group or on your own is to develop that mathematical model, label the picture, and see if you can come up with a function. So I'm going to pause the video and I'd like you to take a minute or two to discuss this with your group or work on it on your own if you're not in a group. On the next step, in step two, developing the mathematical model, since they wanted us to um, develop a mathematical model, I figured since they want to maximize area, we would use the area to be x times y. I labeled the sides as x and y. Um, and they also gave me some information about the perimeter in terms of we only had 800 meters of fencing. So I wrote up an equation that actually this is called a constraint equation and this is something that we are expected to abide by and the area equation is what we are trying to find the maximum value of. What I'd like you to do is in the, in the um, in the act of trying to find the optimum dimensions, I would like you to try to draw three configurations of this um, of this rectangular pen with different dimensions, abiding by this rule, and see if you can you can see if there's a pattern with the area. So, um, I'll give you an example. If we just try one dimension configuration and we say that, let's say this side is 100, then that would force this side to be 100 and the remaining, the third side would have to be 600. This would yield an area of um, 600 times 100 or 60,000 square meters. So that would be for an x value of 100 and a y value of 600. So try to, try to find two other design configurations for the area of this pen. I came up with three design configurations. My first design configuration was 100 by 600, my second was 400 by 0, and my third was 150 by 500. And you can see here the different areas that I get. We would like to get this to be one equation with one variable so that we can graph the function. Um, right now our equation is area is a function of two variables. So I'll write it up as area is a function of two variables and I want you to talk as a group and see if you can come up with how to switch this function to a function of one variable. So that's your task for the next couple minutes. Well, hopefully you uh, 
didn't have much trouble with this. Uh, we said our area was a function of two variables. And by using our constraint equation, we plugged in uh, for y, 800 minus 2x. We would simplify that. And now we'd like to try to find the maximum value for area. So using calculus, we'd like you to solve for the maximum value for area using um, our uh, method for finding extreme values, which involves checking the endpoints and uh, finding the critical points. So um, take a moment, pause the video, and work as a group to find out what those critical points and endpoints would be. Remember that when we're finding our critical points, we take our function, area, and we take the derivative of it with respect to our variable. In this case, our variable was x. When we took the derivative, we set it to 0, and we solve for x. Now, it's saying that at x equals 200, we have a critical point here. What about our endpoints? What I'd like you to do is discuss with your group what you think the endpoints of this area function could be. Okay, and we're back. And what we did, hopefully you checked your endpoints and you saw that one endpoint would be zero for x, the other endpoint would be 400. Those would be the two extreme values for x on the interval. And the critical point yielded a maximum value of 80,000 square meters. In closing with this question, I'd like you to all consider, would the, would the answer have been any different if instead of choosing uh, x as our function variable, if we had chosen y. What I'd like you to do is talk it over with your group to see if you change the variable from x to y, and I mean solving the area equation, make the area equation instead of an area equation in terms of x, making it an area equation in terms of y, would you anticipate the answer to be the same or different? I hope you found this problem helpful. Now let's move on to the next optimization problem.